I am shamelessly sitting here in my sweatpants and I encourage you also to do the same. Grab a cup of warm something, grab a snack, get cozy, and let's talk about some of my favorites. So today I am doing my monthly favorites for September. And today I decided to switch it up a little bit and include more like hair care, skincare, lifestyle stuff in my favorites today because I've spoken a lot about my makeup favorites, especially recently, so I didn't wanna to be too redundant. And let me know some of your favorites over the last month in whatever category category you choose. I would love to hear it. Leave them down below and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy favorites videos and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Let's get right into it. So I think I'm going to start off first with my favorite makeup products from the month and I think by far my number one product this month was the Chanel Ew, there's a hair in the cap. <laughs> Chanel Le Beige Touche de Teint Water Fresh Complexion Touch Foundation. I tried this, I think it was like right at the beginning of the month. It was in a Chanel try on video. I will link that down below if you haven't seen it yet. I honestly did not expect that I would love this as much as I did. It really took me by surprise. So what makes this product really great is that it combines the texture of a skin tint, but the coverage of like a medium coverage foundation. And on top of that, it looks really fresh throughout the entire day and it wears beautifully because the weather is changing my skin is getting a lot drier and it's getting even more finicky and this product has been playing so nice with my skin it doesn't make my dry patches look worse it just works with it because it's more of a hydrating foundation if you do want to see more of an in-depth review on this an application all of that i'll link the try on that i did but overall it's an A++ for me. Next, I have this little blush here from Laura Mercier. This is the blush color infusion in the shade Very Berry, and it's what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. So you can see exactly what this stuff looks like. So this is a really beautiful berry tone blush, and I typically don't really go for these types of shades in powder format. I'll go for something like this more in a cream because I feel like in a cream, especially for a shade that's this deep, I can control it a little bit better, but in a powder, sometimes it's harder to control how much pigment will actually be applied to the skin and it is definitely a really pigmented product as you can see like it's not it's not a shy blush even though it's a deeper blush the texture and the finish and everything about it just is so easy to work with and it's not intimidating at all it's a very very smooth blush and the way that it applies on the cheeks is also like butter it does not apply patchy super easy to control and it gives you the most beautiful just berry flush and i feel like this color is so gorgeous for the fall time and it also has a very very subtle glow to it which i love in a blush because then it just means that i could be a little bit lazy and skip highlighter when i wear this color i also sometimes feel like i don't necessarily need to go in with a bronzer because it does such a good job of warming up the face and then another blush that i've been loving this is definitely one that i'm carrying over from the summertime it is the dior backstage rosy glow blush just like everybody else this summer i've been obsessed with this this is such an insanely bright bubblegum pink blush and normally i would never go towards a blush like this but this blush is really special and i feel like it's one of those blushes that really just transforms on the skin and it becomes so beautiful and flattering even though it looks like it would be the opposite of that in the pen what i've actually been doing which is so pretty is i've been layering these two guys together so i'll put the laura mercier blush on my entire cheek and then i'll take a little bit of the dior and i'll put it mainly on the apple of my cheek and i'll kind of just like flick it on my cheek like that and it gives a little bit of a gradient effect like how pretty is that little combo i've had quite a busy september i did do a new launch for jamie page doodles and whenever i do a new launch for my stationery shop i'm very much in work mode and so i don't really take that much time to do my makeup every single day and on most days i was just doing a little bit of concealer some blush and mascara and this was the concealer that i was using kind of in place of my foundation it's the lis triple fix full coverage brightening concealer i love this because because it's super full coverage but it's still quite hydrating so it doesn't look cakey or heavy on the skin and I find it works really well underneath the eyes or around the face and because it has such good coverage to it when I apply it on those key areas of my face and I blend it out it honestly looks like I'm wearing a foundation because my skin just looks so perfected but still really really lightweight because I'm not wearing a foundation on top of the concealer and the combination of these two are also beautiful and it gives you such a flawless look I am totally cheating with this next product because I only discovered this last week but I need to talk about this because I am so highly impressed by it. I cannot wait a whole nother month to put this in my monthly favorites, which I know it will definitely be there. It is the new Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. 
There was so much hype around this mascara, and whenever there's any hype around any type of product on social media, my eyebrows raise immediately. But what got me really excited is that Katie Jane Hughes was talking about this mascara, and I love every single one of her makeup recommendations. I think she has impeccable makeup taste, so the fact that she was standing behind this mascara and was so excited about it, that got me really excited. So I got this and I gotta say it is obviously 100% worth the hype. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it in my favorites today. This mascara checks off every single box that I have for mascara. In one week, immediately, <laughs> immediately, this is a holy grail product for me. So you may be asking yourself, Jamie, what makes this mascara so amazing? Let me just show you my lashes. I don't even really need to say much. I feel like the lashes kind of speak for themselves. This is probably one of the most intense mascaras that I've tried. Like this isn't even built up to its fullest potential. I can get my lashes to look so much more intense if I just kept on layering this, but this is basically where I like to stop just from my personal preferences, but you see how feathery my lashes look. They look voluminous, they look long, they look separated. They look like kind of fake. It looks like I'm wearing falsies. This also does not smudge, it does not flake. It lasts so well. It's easy to remove. I don't think it's considered a waterproof mascara, but I've already had a cry session <laughs> with this on my lashes and it didn't even go everywhere. My eyeliner disappeared, but my mascara, was still on my lashes. The wand is also great. So here's what it looks like. It has a curve to it, which I really like because it does a great job of actually lifting the lashes and curling the lashes and holding the curl. And it has this really interesting, like flexible wand situation. I'm not gonna show you because I don't wanna get mascara all over my fingers, but there is kind of like an opening in the middle. Anyways, I can go on and on. I don't see how I'll be using any other mascara anytime soon. So it's that good. I'm that obsessed, 10 on 10, 11 on 10, 12 on 10, would recommend. And we're finishing on that high note. That is all the makeup I'm gonna be talking about today. Now let's move into another beauty category. Let's talk about some hair care. This is the Olaplex number no. 4C Bond Maintenance Clarifying Shampoo. Now I've been doing a lot of hair research lately, especially when it comes to curly hair. And I was watching a lot of Mains by Mel videos because she has great, great, great curly hair content. And she was raving about this Olaplex number no. 4C bond maintenance clarifying shampoo. And she was also expressing the importance of using a clarifying shampoo when you do have curly hair or really any hair type. This is meant to remove heavy metals, minerals, chlorine, pollutants, and product buildup without stripping for visibly healthy hair. And she was raving about this Olaplex shampoo because it does just that, but it also does not strip the hair. I've used so many other clarifying shampoos in my day that have made my hair so brittle and so dry that I just never wanted to use them ever again. And I can confirm that this does not strip the hair, which is just such a pleasure. I really don't wash my hair that often. I typically do it like every six or so days. And so I'll only use this maybe like every third or fourth wash. And when I do use it, I lather it in my hair and then I let it sit for a couple minutes. You know, after you go to your salon and you get a haircut and blow out and your hair just feels so light, that's what this makes my hair feel like. It feels super, super clean, but it does not feel stripped whatsoever, especially when I do combine it with a deep conditioning mask right after. And it's just incredibly effective. So I can really see this staying in my routine for a very, very, very long time. So this is your reminder to use a clarifying shampoo if you haven't done it in a while. <laughs> Another hair care product that I have been loving lately is the JVN Complete Blowout Styling Milk. Once in a while, I'll try a product that just clicks so well with my hair and I'm like, holy sh shit, this is doing wonders for it. And it gets me very excited. And this is one of those products. So this is a blowout styling milk. So I put it in when my hair is damp and then I use it before blowing out my hair. This does a couple different things. It will help to protect the hair against heat, which is always great. I find it adds so much bounce and shine to my hair. And I also find that it allows my blowout to last longer. When I use this and I do my blowout, my hair feels incredible. Again, it kind of gives me that salon-like feel after blowing out my hair. It makes my hair look shinier, it makes it look smoother, and it's always so nice to find hair products that do what they say that they're going to do. There was one time over the last couple of weeks that I didn't use it and I regretted not using it because my hair just didn't look as nice. 
It's a fantastic product. All right, so that's it for the hair care products. Now let's move into some skincare products. I have the Elemis Superfood AHA Glow Cleansing Butter here. This is probably one of my new favorite cleansing balms. It is so delicious. It's kind of like a thick, creamy, oily texture, and it feels so good when you massage it on your face. It does a beautiful job of breaking down the makeup. It doesn't leave an oily residue after you take it off of your face. And what I really, really appreciate about this product, and I haven't actually seen in other cleansing balm type products, is that there's AHA in here. So it will also chemically exfoliate your face at the same time. My skin loves a good AHA product and I feel like this type of product is so nice going into the colder months because it feels so nice and like nourishing as you're removing your makeup, but it will also help dryness with some of that physical exfoliation with the AHA. I've also been loving the Foreo. This is the Foreo Luna Mini 2 and this is a cleansing device and I used to use Foreos all the time, but I lost mine unfortunately, which was very, very sad and I haven't had a cleansing device in my routine since. And I finally decided to pick up another one because I, I really wanted to get a better clean whenever I would wash my face. And this is perfect. It's a silicone brush head and I really like that, especially compared to bristles because it is just way more hygienic. It's super easy to clean. And so what I'll do is I'll take some of my cleanser or even the cleansing balm and I'll massage the product into my skin with the Foreo. And it does vibrate by the way. You just gotta press the button back here. It has a couple different intensities. And it feels amazing, first of all. And it really just like works the product into the skin and it gets my skin feeling so nice and clean. And I really love this in the morning to wake my skin up. I never used to use it in the morning. When I did have a Foreo, I would pretty much only use it when I would take my makeup off. But in the morning, it's such a beautiful little ritual and experience. And I'll use this to do some lymphatic drainage and massage my face. And it does such a nice job of depuffing while also cleaning my face at the same time. Such a great little device, I love it. The last skincare product that I have here is the Dermalogica Daily Milk Foliant Calming Oat-Based Powder Exfoliant. I've been a long time user of the Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant. I think I've used that for almost like I don't know, seven or so years. And so I was really excited when I saw the Dermalogica came out with a new product in that range called the Milk Foliant. The Microfoliant is basically the only product that I would use to actually physically exfoliate my skin where I don't feel like it's too abrasive or that it's like damaging my skin because physical exfoliators can be very, very tricky to use and you do have to be kind of careful with them. It's a very, very fine powder that you mix with a little bit of water and it creates a paste that has a little bit of like a gritty texture to it, but it's very gentle and you use that to exfoliate the face. This is exactly like that, but it's far more gentle. If I had to describe the texture, it kind of feels like cornmeal. So you mix this powder with a little bit of water and then you use that to massage all over your face and you'll get a nice, very gentle exfoliation. There's also AHAs and BHAs in the formula, so it does have that chemical exfoliator in there as well. And so overall, it just makes my skin feel really, really nice and smooth. All right, now let's get into some of my other favorites, my lifestyle favorites. I do have a candle here that I wanted to talk about. I'm very passionate about my candles, especially around this time of year. That's when I pull out my candles the most. And I just got this new one from the new Savant that I absolutely love. It's called The Usual. Listen to these notes. Cocoa powder, pistachio, black coffee, vanilla bean, and suede oak. Does that not sound just so freaking delicious? The black coffee in here really does come through when I light this. It just makes me feel like I'm sitting at a cafe, um, but it's not overpowering. It's not too intense. It's also not too sweet, but it's sweet enough. And it just gives me those cozy fall vibes without it being pumpkin chai, you know? I don't know exactly how long it's been, but I think it's been maybe a month, month and a half that I haven't really been drinking coffee. So I would typically have coffee every single morning as soon as I would wake up. And I found <laughs> over time that I could barely wake up in the morning without having a cup of coffee. And if I were to skip my cup of coffee in the morning, I would feel like garbage for the rest of the day. And I really didn't like that. And so I decided that I would challenge myself to get off of coffee for the time being so that I was not dependent on it and I could enjoy a cup of coffee every once in a while without needing it to actually wake up in the morning. So it's been about a month and a half now that I've been on this journey and I have not started my day with coffee at all. <laughs> and I've only had, I think, like three cups of coffee throughout this journey. And I've noticed such a huge difference in my energy levels, especially in the morning. I wake up now and I am energized. I don't need the coffee to get my energy. Now I do still have a morning beverage that I really enjoy and that's matcha. So I wanted to share with you guys my favorite matcha that I've discovered. It is from the brand Peak 
P-I-Q-U-E, and it's called the Sun Goddess Matcha. It's organic ceremonial grade matcha. It's probably one of the best matchas that I've tried. It is so creamy, so delicious. It doesn't have any like bitter aftertaste to it at all. It creates a coffee shop or cafe worthy matcha at home every single time. They sell them in two different forms. They have the um, little packets, and then they also have just like the matcha loose in a tin. I really like the packets for when I'm on the go. I'll just like throw it in my purse and that way when I'm at my office or if I'm around town, I just need a little bit of hot water and I pour this into my cup and I have my matcha ready to go. And I really love matcha because it doesn't give me any jitters or caffeine crash and I just feel so much better drinking this. So that is my favorite matcha. Let's talk books. Now, I've been on a big book reading and book listening journey recently. I've always been a big reader, but I only really read at night before going to sleep. And because I was already tired, I would only get through like two or three pages before I just passed out. Over the last month, I actually made it a point to read during the day when I am fully awake. Um, and instead of scrolling on my phone, I would take out my book. And it's been honestly life-changing like I can't believe I haven't done this up until now because it fills my soul with so much joy I love it so much I wanted to give you guys two of my book recommendations the first one was an audiobook I am obsessed with audiobooks especially when I'm packing orders for my stationery shop and so I listened to the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this was such a hyped up book and everybody was talking about it at one point I was a little bit late to the party but I'm so happy that I decided to listen to it in this case the character development in the story was so great and I really felt very invested in all of the characters and I felt so many emotions towards all of them throughout the story. It was slightly predictable, but also a little bit unexpected at times. It was just one of those stories that felt very easy to get sucked into and I found it really entertaining and enjoyable. I'm not really great at giving book descriptions without giving spoilers, so I'm just going to not do that. <laughs> so if you do want to learn more about the book, I'll put a link to it down below and you could read the, the actual synopsis, but I'm not going to read that out loud. That's super boring, but just know that it has my stamp of approval. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, the second book that I absolutely loved and really took me by surprise is called Pure Nessie. And I think anybody who reads Pure Nessie would agree that it is almost impossible to describe what the story is even about. And it's one of those books where you almost just have to accept its reality and just dive headfirst into it. Otherwise, you're just not going to enjoy it. There were so many moments in the book where when I was reading it and I just kept thinking to myself, this makes no sense, but I love it every single word of it. I can promise you there's probably no other book that's quite like it. And I think it's a really unique story that again, is just so beautiful. And I think it's probably the quickest that I've ever gone through a book. I think I read it in like four days. It was really good. It was really, really, really good. Again, I will put the link to the book in the description box. So if you wanna read a little bit of the synopsis, feel free, but honestly, like even the synopsis like doesn't fully, grasp what the story is all about. I would say don't even read the synopsis, just pick it up, read it, buckle up and enjoy the ride. And that's it guys, those are all of my favorites from the month. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Again, don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one, bye.